We had some great week of praying here and it's been awesome and it's getting more and more awesome. Amen. Amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Father, we rejoice that this morning we are found in you, complete in you. And we rejoice that you are our life. You are the very essence of our existence. We are because you are. And we rejoice that we are complete in you, the head of all principalities and powers. I ask that this morning as we look into your word, revealed knowledge is gifted everybody under the sound of my voice. Bodies and yokes are destroyed. Whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. I thank you, Lord, that your word comes with clarity this morning. And by the end of this service, we are built up, equipped, edified, and Jesus is glorified. Thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together. So say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the word. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore, today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of the Facebook, I mean all of the social media community. We're so glad to have all of you connected to the service this morning. I tell you, we're going to have an exciting time of studying the word of his grace. You need to invite a friend, a family member. Do me the favor you've always done. Let's flood the earth with the truth of the gospel of Christ. All right, so share the video on all the groups on your page. In fact, join more groups. You know, tag friends, tag people. Share the video on WhatsApp. Telegram, monogram, you know, just, just let's flood the earth with the truth of the gospel of Christ. And we're so glad to have all of you as part of our church community. We want to welcome all the Bible study centers and all the campuses around the world that are connected to the service this morning. Hey guys, we're going to have a great time adventuring in the word of his grace. So get ready and get excited about the goodness of God. And everybody in the building, are we excited about the word this morning? Can we give the Lord the greatest shout and the greatest celebration? That doesn't sound like a shout. That sounds like a win. Yeah, that sounds more like it. Hallelujah. Amen. Grab your pen, your Bible, your notebook, and you can be seated with your sweet, smart self this morning as we get into the word of his grace. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right, so we're examining the move of the spirit. The move of the spirit. We must realize that we live in a day and time where there's so much news in the natural. So much news in the natural. And the news is meant to control you. The news is meant to control you. Control how you think. Control how you reason. And control how you react. That's the whole intent of all the bombardments you hear on on all the news channels, BBC, CNN, Al Jazeera, NTA channels, AIT, all the various outlets where you get news from. The whole intent is to control you, control how you reason, how you think, and how you react. You must always feed your mind with the word of God. You must always, because there's a lot of bombardment. The enemy is releasing all kinds of news you know, all over the place to bombard your mind and control how you think and ultimately control the outcome of your life on the earth. Mm -mm. Matthew chapter 28 verse number 18. Matthew 28 verse number 18. Mm -mm. Matthew 28 verse number 18. And Jesus came... Whoever is on that computer needs to be awake. And as quickly, I need somebody that is with me in the service, not somebody who is just typing things. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Next verse. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Next verse. 
teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. If your Bible is mine, I will underline that. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus is teaching from Genesis to Malachi. I hope you understand. I hope you understand. This is Jesus teaching here. What we read is Jesus teaching. And he's teaching from Genesis to Malachi. Because when Jesus was saying what he's saying here, there was no book of Matthew, there was no Colossians, there was no Ephesians. So whatever he was teaching here was from Genesis to Malachi. All right, now the concept of Old Testament and New Testament, of course, is you know, it does not exist and it's not doctrinally right, like I told you the other day, because the concept of New Testament simply means God renewing his covenant over time. If you followed what I taught on Wednesday, that the New Testament actually is a renewal of the promise God made to Abraham, which under the law of Moses, men failed and didn't believe that promise. So because men failed and didn't believe the promise of God to Abraham, God renewed that promise in the New Testament. So it's not a new covenant and an old covenant. It's one covenant that God has had with man from the beginning of time. It's one covenant. There are no two covenants. It's one covenant. All right, so God made that covenant to Abraham as a promise. And under the law of Moses, men didn't believe that promise that God made to Abraham. So Jesus showed up on that communion table or on that Passover table and said, this is the new or the renewed, and we took time to do all of those uh, word study on Wednesday. This is the renewed covenant in my blood, the renewed of the promise which God made to Abraham in Genesis. So Jesus now is teaching from Genesis to Malachi and then he says to them, Lo, I am with you always to the end of the earth. And he said that from Genesis to Malachi. Now, <clears throat> that promise that God made to Abraham from Genesis to Malachi, he fulfilled it in the four gospels. In the four gospels. And the manifestation of it is what we have in the book of Acts and the epistles. The manifestation of the fulfilled promise in the gospels is what we have in Acts of the Apostles and the epistles. The manifestation. So Jesus taught from Genesis to Malachi. And we said you must read from where your teacher is reading from. So if Jesus taught from Genesis to Malachi and read from Genesis to Malachi, if we're going to understand what Jesus was communicating, we must also go back and read from Genesis to Malachi. Your teacher cannot be using a book of psychology and you are using mathematics. He's reading psychology and you're reading mathematics. You will never understand what the man is saying. So if our teacher, which is Jesus in this context, was reading from Genesis to Malachi, if we're going to understand what Jesus was communicating, we also must read from Genesis to Malachi. Are we clear on this? All right. So we must read from where our teacher is reading from. Now, we also said you must go back to their world. You must leave this world and go back to their world or their times to, to be able to read what they read. You must know what they knew and you must hear what they heard. You must know what they knew. You must hear what they heard to be able to understand what was communicated to them. <clears throat> So Jesus is reading from Genesis to Malachi. And when he says, lo, I am with you, is the Hebrew word ego imai. E-G-O-E-M-I. Ego imai, which is the same phrase for Yahweh. Yahweh. Yahweh means I am what I am and I will be what I will be. I am what I am and I will be what I will be. Which means 
that Jesus' reference is the Torah, which is what we call the law of Moses, the Torah. The word law of Moses, if I'm going to translate it today, I will call it the writings of Moses. Nomos Mosios in the Hebrew, Nomos Mosios. These writings of Moses is based on the law of Moses. That is what he put down in writing. Within the writings of Moses, we have the judgment, we have the promise, we have the faith, we have the condemnation. They are all included in the writings of Moses. And Jesus taught from those places and then he leaves us with something crucial here. He sent them on a mission. Now, please, everybody say with me very loud, I am mission-minded. Can I hear you say it two more times? One more time. All right, so he sent them on a mission. I am going to link them with what I taught you last week. I mentioned that there's something common within Matthew to John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it has a commission in it. A commission. God is a missionary God. God is a missionary God. In other words, God has a mission. God has a mission. If you look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28, he outlines his mission. He said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it. That is God's mission. That is God's mission. That means the very essence of man is to walk with God in his mission. The very essence of man is to walk with God in his mission on the earth. God is a mission God. So you must always find yourself on a mission. You must always find yourself on a mission. Remember, everybody he calls had a mission. Everybody God called had a mission. That's why we know that Abel had a mission. And that's why he was killed by his brother. Enoch was a prophet. You know? Enoch was a prophet. That's why he could prophesy. He had a child called Methuselah. The meaning of Methuselah is when he dies, it shall happen. What Enoch was saying is by calling his son Methuselah is that all the prophecies I gave, when I die, they will come to pass. So they called their children with mission names in Bible days. They call their children names that revealed their mission in Bible days. Okay, So Enoch was a prophet of God. We also have Noah. We have Abraham. All of them had a mission to the very last patriarch of the Old Testament, which is Malachi in the sense of the arrangement of scripture. God is a mission God. So if Jesus had left in the four gospels, that is not physically visible anymore. That's what I mean by he had left. That is, we don't see him anymore. All right. And he didn't give them a mission. We would have faulted Jesus that Jesus is not God. Because God is a missionary God. So if Jesus had walked among them, dwelt among them, and left without giving them a mission, we would have faulted that Jesus cannot be God. Because that would not be consistent with the character of God. Why? Because God is a mission God. Are we in the building here? God is a mission God. <clears throat> Please pay attention because I want to show you some things. When God took Israel out of Egypt, Exodus chapter 4 verse 22, Exodus chapter 4 verse number 22, and thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Next verse, next verse, and I say unto thee, let my son go, 
Why? That he may serve me. Let my son go. Why? That he may serve me. If your Bible is mine, I will have underlined go. That he may serve me. Very critical. Let my son go. He's my firstborn. Let him go. Why? That he may serve me. Which means Israel has to go because Israel has work to do. They have work to do. So in view of the work, let them go. So which means the intent for letting them go is for the mission. Are we in the building here? The reason for letting them go. Otherwise, there's no need to let them go. They could have as well stayed where they were. After all, they were comfortable. They were happy with what they were doing. But I am letting them go in view of the mission I have ahead of them. Are we in the building here? And Moses said, we want to go to the wilderness that we may serve God. We want to go that we may serve God. That was the service. The service was temple service. To be priests on the earth. Temple service. To be priests on the earth. So, in the deliverance of God, where he saves, he gives you a mandate. In the deliverance of God, where he saves, he gives you a mandate. He saves you for a mandate. He calls Abraham out. And he calls him to. He calls Abraham out. And he calls him to. He calls him out in Genesis 12 verse 1. Put it up for me. Genesis chapter 12 verse number 1. And the Lord had said unto Abraham. Get thee out of thy country. And from thy kindred. And from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. So he calls him out. Are we in the building? Then he calls him to. In verse 2 and 3 of Genesis 12. He calls him to. Put it up for me. Genesis 12, 2 and 3. Genesis 12. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. And, thine, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. So he calls him out. And he calls him too. In fact in verse 3 he says to Abraham. In thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Go ye into all the world. And preach the gospel to every creature. The families of the earth. The gospel of the blessing. The gospel of the blessing. So when he called Abraham, he sent him on a mission of the preaching of the gospel. He calls Abraham that in him shall all families of the earth be blessed. So he called Abraham to inherit the earth. To inherit the earth. So there's always a mandate in the covenant and the promise of God. There is always a mandate in the covenant and the promise of God. Please, that's important. There's always a commission. You know, I said to you, Matthew has it. Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. Go make disciples, teaching them to observe. And lo, I am with you always to the end of the earth. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 20. Go and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 20. And the Lord was walking with them, confirming his word with signs following. And then, of course, in Luke 24, 47 to 49, that repentance and the remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning 
at Jerusalem. John 20, 21 to 22. John 20, 21 to 22. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Next verse, 20 to 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Next verse, 23. Whosoever sins you remit, how do you remit people's sins? By preaching the gospel of the remission of sins. And whoever sins you retain, how do you retain their sins? By not preaching to them, you are retaining their sins. So the commission is replicated in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Are we still in the building? And then in Acts chapter 1 verse 4. Look at Acts chapter 1 verse number 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. Verse 5, verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Verse 8, verse 8, verse 8 for time, verse 8 of Acts chapter 1. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Why? Indeed shall all families of the earth be blessed. So the commission was repeated by the four gospels. The mandate. So you will always find a missionary position to the gospel. You believe it, then you preach it. You believe it, then you preach it. Very important. In John chapter 4, the woman believed Jesus is a Christ. Then she went to the city and preached it. That's how it always works. She believed that Jesus was the Christ. Then she went to the city and preached what she had believed. So which means the message of the gospel makes a messenger out of you. The message of the gospel makes a messenger out of you. Say with me very loud everybody. The message of the gospel makes a messenger out of me. Say it one more time. We said that Jesus explores the I am with you always to the end of the world. I am with you always to the end of the world. Let me give you a teaser. First Corinthians chapter 8. Brother Paul introduces a subject of food sacrificed to idols. All right, I just want to give you a teaser for your thinking. And he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge, but knowledge perfect up. Knowledge perfect up, but charity edifies. Knowledge puffs up. Knowledge makes you arrogant. But charity edifies or builds. Love builds. Love builds. Love builds. When you hear the word build or edify is the word oikodomio in the Greek which you see in the words of Jesus. I will build my church. I will build my church. Jesus is a builder. God is a builder. His children must be builders. We build. We do not destroy. We build. We do not destroy. In Matthew 7, 24, 
Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Jesus talked about whosoever heareth my word and doeth them, he will not liken unto a wise man which builds. Hearing my word and doing them is equivalent to building. Edify. Edify. Jesus said, destroy this temple and in three days I will build it up. I will build it up. He's a builder. And you see that Jesus spoke a lot about temples. Then you walk into the Acts and you see that there was a lot of conversation about temples. Then you read the epistles. In the epistles, they use the word edify. 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 Which is the same word for build. Because God has a walk on the earth. And God's walk on the earth is to build a temple. To build his own temple. So when we pray, when we sing, and when we walk in love, what are we doing? We are building God's temple. We are building God's temple. Every activity we engage in in the body. We are building a resting place according to Genesis. A, a resting place. Genesis 2, 1 to 3. We are building a temple where God dwells and where God walks. Where God dwells and where God walks. That's why love is what builds that temple on the earth. Love is what builds God's temple on the earth. So Paul throws that narrative to us there in that Corinthians. He begins to talk about food offered to idols. Then he says, we know that an idol is nothing in the world. In verse 4 of that 1 Corinthians 8. Look at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 4. <clears throat> As concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is none other God but one. Remember, when Paul is saying what he's saying here in 1 Corinthians, he is reading from Genesis to Malachi. Because when Paul is speaking to the church at Corinth, there was no book of Corinthians. Okay? There was no Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So his reference, where he's teaching the Corinthian brethren from, is Genesis to Malachi. Just like Jesus is teaching in Matthew from Genesis to Malachi. All of these teachings are from Genesis to Malachi. So brother Paul is teaching the church at Corinth and he says to them as concerning things sacrificed to idols teaching from the Old Testament. We know that there are no gods. We know that there is only one God. Mm -mm. Why does he say we know? For you and I because we are 2,000 years Far from that writing. What we are reading now was written 2,000 years ago. And several thousand years from when it was taught. When it was actually taught, we have thousands of years from when it was written. And from when it was written to where we are is over 2,000 years. That's why the Bible is an ancient material. He is teaching from Genesis to Malachi, precisely Deuteronomy chapter 6. Precisely. And he says, we know an idol is nothing, for there is one God and Father who is over all, in whom are all things, through whom are all things. Which is from Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Put it up for me. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Hear, O Israel, 
The Lord our God is one Lord. Which shows you that the essence of the Torah or the law of Moses and its instructions thou shall not eat this, thou shall not eat that, thou shall not mix this with that, which goes into their culture and into what they wore clothes was because there was idolatry in view. All the dietary instructions of Moses was because there was idolatry in view. And Paul says now, we know an idol is nothing. But there are people who have the consciousness of an idol. They have the consciousness of it. And they are weak in their minds. Their conscience is weak, but they are brethren. They have a weak conscience, but they are born again. Our God is their God. Our Father is their Father. But their conscience is weak. So because of such people, you abstain from meat. Which means eventually, we are coming to the teaching of Moses. You see that? You see that? Huh. All right. <clears throat> to abstain from such meat because such meat means something to idolatry. We know there's nothing about it. Israel knows there's nothing about it. That God created the heavens and the earth and everything that is in it. But because it is turned into idolatry, love will make me abstain from it. So the reason for the law of Moses or the writings of Moses, which is Moses, as touching diet was because it was already in view of idol practice. And because the Lord your God is one Lord, we abstain from it, not because an idol is anything. Um, are you following? Okay. So in worship of God, we walk in love towards others. We love God, worship. We love others. We abstain. So Paul is saying, look, that's why we are not eating meat. Not because it's good or bad. But if eating meat will make my brother to sin, I would rather not eat it. So if you're going into a nation to preach as a missionary, as an evangelist, as a man or woman of God, you know, a brother walked to me within the week and said, Papa, my office have transferred me to a particular state in Nigeria from this city. I was praying against it. But after a while, I started saying to myself, that's an opportunity for me to go there and start a power city campus. So now I'm excited about going. And I'm going to accept the transfer joyfully and go there and start a branch so that what I have received, I can help others to receive. That is the way believers think. Because we are mission-minded. That's the way to think. That's the way to think. What is thinking of first is not even the salary or the comfort. What is thinking of is that now, God is giving me an opportunity to go to another part and leave the headquarters as an extension of this light I have received so that others in darkness can have access to this light. That is the way to think. Uh, oh yeah, such opportunities are going to open up to a number of you here in the course of the year. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. You don't have to say amen for it to happen. I am not even looking for your amen. I'm telling you what will happen as a prophet. 
Yeah, I'm telling you what is going to happen. Just watch, you will see. Lego <laughs> Dagabaya. Yeah. Such opportunities are going to open up. God is raising houses all over the world. Houses of light. Because God is missionary minded. He's a missionary God. So when you go to a nation or a country or a place to, to, to preach the gospel, you must remember that our God is God over all. Yahweh. He is the God of the whole world. And we see that in that place we go to preach, they have offered food to idols. Even though we like the food and we know that there's nothing there, we will not eat it. Because we are mission minded. We will not eat it. Not because there is anything in that meat. But we came there to build. Our faith is in Yahweh. We abstain from it for their sake. In doing that, we build and edify. We don't destroy. That is the essence. So Paul said, we know that an idol is nothing in this world, but if someone has the consciousness of it, we are going to be judged if we make him to be offended. Our liberty is going to be judged by that fellow's conscience. Now, that's just a teaser I gave you. So, here we see Jesus reading from the Torah. Lo, I am with you. So if I am with you, what comes to mind is Moses. Exodus 3.12. Please stay with me now. I'm going to push some things quickly. Exodus 3.12. And he said, certainly I will be with thee. If your Bible is mine, I will underline that. I will be with thee and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. And you shall serve God upon this mountain. Did you, did you observe that? I will be with you. And this shall be a token. When you have brought them out. And you shall serve. You are bringing them out. With the intent of a mission. You shall serve. I will be with you. I am that I am. I will be what I will be. Exodus chapter 4 verse 12. Pay attention. Exodus chapter 4 verse 12. Now therefore go and I will be with thy mouth. First one, I will be with you. Number two, I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. That flows through Exodus. Then Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. Joshua Chapter 1, verse number 5. Joshua, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I will be with thee. That also goes throughout all of Joshua, which means that this is a new covenant again. God is renewing his promise to be with you as he gives you a mandate. To be with you as he gives you a mandate. I am with you always. So, who is the I am? The I am is the Yahweh of Exodus 3.14. And he's the Yahweh of Exodus 6 verse 2. And he is the Yahweh because he said, As I made promise unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Meaning he is the same one. He promised Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Joshua, and that same Yahweh says to them in Matthew, Lo, I am with you. 
the audience automatically knew that the God who appeared to Moses is the same God talking to them. Are we teaching here? The same. I am. The I am Yahweh. Now, that takes us back to very crucial elements. Very crucial elements. We focus on Abraham a little bit. Abraham in Genesis 27 is called a prophet. The Hebrew word Nabi. N-I-B-I. Nabi. Please hold that word very well. Nabi. In Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning. Barashit Elohim Barath. Etashamayim's letter aret. That's a Hebrew word, which means that is the new creation. That creation in the beginning, God created was the prophecy of the new creation. Yeah. The new creation, or let's call it the mandate of the gospel. Genesis 1 opens with the mandate of the gospel or the promise of the new creation. That's how the Bible opens. That's how Moses' teaching ministry opened up. When we go out on the street to preach the gospel, when we make disciples, what are we doing? We are building or we are recreating heaven on earth. Yeah. Yeah. When we preach the gospel, when we get people born again, when we bring people to the kingdom, we are recreating heaven on the earth. Because in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And that creation only finds expression by the preaching of the gospel. When the gospel is preached and people are saved, we are his workmanship created. In the beginning, God created. Are you in the building? Stay with me. Now, that's what Jesus meant when he said, all authority is given to me. In heaven and on earth. That shows you that is the work of a new creation. Is the work of a new creation. Heaven and earth refers to a new man. God's temple in the earth. God's glory in all the earth. The born again man is heaven and earth. <laughs> the new creation man is heaven and earth sometimes you have to speak in tongues to swallow some things heaven and earth refers to God's glory in all of the earth so now Verse 2 of Genesis 1 is our focus. Are you in the building? Okay. What I'm teaching this morning and in the second service and on Wednesday and next Sunday first and second service is introduction into new creation committee. The move of the spirit. Stay with me. Our focus is Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. The earth was without form and void. The word tohua bohu. Tohua bohu is spelled as T O H U W A B O H U. Tohua bahu, which is used for confusion. Tohua bohu, confusion. And it is explained equally in Jeremiah. Please stay with me. Jeremiah 423. 
Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 23. I beheld the earth and lo, it was without form and void. And the heavens and they had no light. Form and void and darkness. They had no light. Isaiah 24, 19. Isaiah 24, 19. Isaiah 24, verse 19. Thank you, Lord. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. Just Jeremiah 4.22 Look at how he describes the people. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil. But to do good, they have no knowledge. Next verse. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. So, no form and void is a people. The earth was without form and void in Genesis 1-2, is a people without God. Look at 20, 20, 23 again of that Jeremiah chapter 4. Please pay attention. I beheld the earth and lo, it was without form and void and the heavens and they had no light. 24. I beheld the mountains and lo, they trembled and all the hills moved lightly. 20, 26. I beheld and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness. And all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. 27. For thus had the Lord said, the whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. 28. For this shall the earth mourn, and the heavens above be black, because I have spoken it, I have proposed it, and will not repent. Neither will I turn back from it. So, when you hear the earth was without form and void, he describes a people that are disobedient. A people that are disobedient. Then Genesis 1-2. Darkness. Darkness. Genesis 1-2. Put it up for me. Genesis 1-2. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness. Darkness means a people. Without form and void is a people. Darkness is a people. Please observe. Isaiah 60 verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 60 1 and 2. Arise shine for the light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Verse 2. For behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. Gross darkness the people. So that describes the people. The people is form and void. The people are darkness. And the spirit of God moved. Are you in the building? The spirit of God moved. That's our focus. The spirit of God moving is what you can call the core of the gospel. The spirit of God moving is what you can call the core of the gospel. Moving. As though it was something moving on the waters. And of course, remember, Moses is using imagery to communicate. He's using imagery to communicate his thoughts. Moving on the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. Light be. Which means, the work of the spirit in the earth 
is the new creation. The work of the spirit in the earth is the new creation. The work of the spirit in the earth is the new creation and is signs and wonders. The new creation and its signs and orders. In other words, we are going to see signs and wonders in the new creation. We are going to see signs and wonders in the new creation. In other words, the new creation is a custodian of signs and wonders. So, the new creation is you and I building and making available the earth as God's temple. You and I building and making available the earth as God's temple. We also have judgment over the works of evil. If sickness can be cured and demons cast out, that means the gospel also pronounces judgment on the work of evil. Huh? Yeah. Are you in the building? Yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah. A young man stole one of our amplifiers or something, a gadget, one of our electronic gadgets, when we went to Ghana to preach. He came to the conference and stole it. We left him. Few weeks after, he had an accident. Then he started looking for me. That he knows I'm angry with him. That's why he had the accident. Then calamities began to befall him. I hear he's looking for me very restlessly. We are the carriers of the blessing. Eh? But if you reject us and you reject what we bring, when we leave, when we leave, hmm. when we leave, what you will have is dust. Dust. I told them to tell him I didn't cause him. He cost himself. When we bring the gospel and you reject it, when we leave with it, it is automatic that evil will come. We don't have to pray. That's the way it is. There can be no void. Something must fill it up. <laughs> Let me leave that side. So the spirit of God moving. The spirit moved. Then the next thing we see is. God said in a voice. In a voice. Light be light was. Uh, stay with me. Genesis 3.8 The move of the spirit. And they heard... The voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. In the garden, in the cool of the day. They had the ruach. They had the ruach. Walking in the garden, in the ruach of the yom. Hebrew, in the Ruach cool of the day, Yum. Ruach is spelled as R-U-A-C-H. Yum is spelled as Y-U-M. The cool of the day means the spirit of the Yum. Cool means spirit. 
Ruach. Of the day means you. Day means light. So, walking in the spirit of light. Genesis 6.3 Stay with me. Are you still in the building? And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be a hundred and twenty years. My spirit shall not strive. So the work of the spirit is to carry out the work of the gospel. And the work of the gospel is the new creation in the earth. Teaching good? So Ruach therefore shows you that this work is going to be carried out in a supernatural way. The gospel is a supernatural message. Therefore, it will depend on supernatural tools to carry it out. You can't preach a supernatural message relying on natural tools. You can only preach the supernatural message relying on supernatural tools. Ruach is a lone word. Where you talk about the invisible, which is perceivable by actions. The invisible, perceivable by actions. So, ruach, used for wind. Remember, I told you before, that the word ruach is used for wind, used for breath, used for air. Wind, breath, air. Shows you that in walking with God... In taking his will around the earth, we have to be supernaturally minded. In walking with God, in taking his will around the earth, we have to be supernaturally minded. We have to be supernaturally minded. If we're going to walk with God in his will on the earth, we must be supernaturally minded. We are not going to be led by science. We are not going to be led by technology. We are going to be led by the spirit of God. If we are going to carry out God's work on the earth, in working with God, we have to work with the supernatural. In working with God, we have to work with the supernatural because the work of God in the earth is by the spirit. By the spirit. It says the spirit of God moved. The ruach of God moved. So the move of God is the move of his spirit. The move of God is the move of his spirit. The work of the spirit on the earth is the new creation. That is what God wants to do on the earth. He does it by his spirit. And if we're going to be conscious of God's plan on the earth, it means we're going to be conscious of the supernatural. We're going to be conscious of the supernatural. Which means the less of the supernatural I am conscious of, the less of God's plan I am conscious of. The more of the supernatural I am conscious of. The more of God's plan I am conscious of. So let's look at a few things. Number one, we saw the first thing about the work of God in the earth is that God speaks. God speaks. Edaba. The first appearance of God in scripture, he spoke. The first time the church was born, the first thing the church did, spoke. And they began to speak in Pentecost. 
in the house of Cornelius, when the Gentiles were brought into the kingdom, the first activity of the Gentiles was speaking. While Peter yet speak, the Holy Ghost fell on those who heard him and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. A believer that does not preach the gospel is spiritually dumb. God spoke Genesis 1 3 and God said light be light was so one of the indicators that I am working with the supernatural is that I am going to have supernatural utterance that's one of the indicators that I am working with the supernatural, I will have supernatural utterance. The gift of utterance. Which means that while everybody is speaking from the seen, I will be speaking from the unseen. <laughs> while everybody is speaking from the visible, I will be speaking from the invisible. The gospel does not conform. The gospel takes over. Yeah. <laughs> the gospel does not conform. The gospel takes over. And reforms. And transforms. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? The gospel does not conform. The gospel takes over. Then the gospel reforms and transforms. In other words, there is darkness and I am saying light. That is supernatural utterance. <laughs> that is, I am saying what every other person is not saying. I may look odd in the number, but I do not need human affirmations. I am affirmed by God. So even if I am odd, I am not uncomfortable. I am so comfortable that all of you put together become uncomfortable in the presence of a man who carries invisible utterances that has realized who he is. Everybody is saying darkness. You walk in there and say light be. Light be. The second thing we see is that there are also revelations of God. Let there be light. <laughs> Let there be light. Me be. Yahweh be. You remember? Last Sunday. Me be. When he said light be, what he meant is me be. Or Yahweh be. Genomai. Genomai B. Genomai. <laughs> I am what I am. I will be what I will be. They know me by I am, but they don't know me by I will be. And Isaiah stood on the shores of prophecy and said, yes, they knew him as I am. But thus saith the Lord, Emmanuel. I will be what I will be. They don't know, but I, Isaiah, by prophetic insight, what he will be is Emmanuel, God with us. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Who is this word that became flesh? 
the I am that I am and I will be what I will be and I will be became the Christ among us. And the Christ among us said, I go. I go. That where I am, you may be. I am with you, but I will be in you. Kabaya. So the I am today is Christ in you. The hope of glory. I thought somebody in this building will shout glory. Stay with me. Stay with me. Let me add this. Whether it's Adam or Eve or Cain, let me even add, or the serpent, eh? as it were, God spoke to all of them. God spoke to all of them. Even the serpent had God. If Satan could hear God and you are a son of God and you don't hear God, something is wrong. There must be supernatural revelations. There must. Why? Because those are the weapons of the preaching of this gospel. The supernatural utterances and the supernatural revelations of God. God spoke to Abraham. Do you know that God spoke to even Abimelech? Even Abimelech. What does that mean? It means that access to the supernatural revelations should not be a drought in the life of a believer. You should swim in it. You should hear God and see God. You and I should constantly have supernatural revelation. A Christian should ask himself from time to time, when last did I hear from God? And when last did I speak supernaturally? If those things don't bother you, then you're not bothered about God's plan on the earth. If those things don't bother you, then you're not bothered about God's plan in the earth. If you see nothing, hear nothing, say nothing. It means you're doing nothing. If you see nothing, hear nothing, say nothing, it means you're doing nothing in God's will and purpose. Because God's will on the earth is done by his spirit. Say with me very loud. I yield myself to the supernatural. Say it one more time. Let me hear you louder. Let somebody in China listening to us now hear you loud. I am going to challenge you today to consciously walk in God's plan. This year we are going to experience a supernatural harvest. I didn't hear your amen. amen. And the harvest will have resources. Men as resources, we will have natural and material resources. If your amen is in this amen, you are a part of what I'm talking about. A harvest will come with men. We shall have a lot of first fruits. A lot of first fruits. First fruits means first time. First timers. There will be a lot of first timers in this place. And in other places. All over the world. We will have a lot of first timers. In the UK, in the US, in Canada, in Australia, in China, in Japan, in India, all of Africa, West Africa, South Africa, North Africa, East Africa. There are going to be first timers coming. I speak as a prophet of God. Mashako Bedegaya. Yeah, these are the days. These are the times. The fields are wide. The harvest is ready. And the harvesters are in the building. A lot of first timers. 
first disciples, first campuses, first move of God, first taste of the world. So many different first fruits because it's a year of supernatural harvest. Kabayada. Yesterday we were training over 150 people from different local governments who came on, on Friday, came on Saturday for training and equipping to spread the gospel in the different local governments of the state. First timers. People coming in. And they're watching all over the state. First timers. First fruits. Out of you, tens and tens of branches will come out. Your amen is not sure. I say out of you, churches will be born. Kabayada, who am I talking to in this building? Out of you, branches, churches, campuses, out of you, nations will be brought in. This year, this year, this year, this year. Jakatama, Jakatama. Say, I am mission minded. Sit down, give me a few minutes. I'm almost done. Therefore, we must tax ourselves and we must ask ourselves very often am I involved in the supernatural? God speaking. I am speaking. I am seeing. It's not supposed to be strange. It's supposed to be the norm. Let me quickly show you how this functioned in Genesis. Enoch was so confident in what God will do, he named his child after the prophecy. That's boldness. He said, there's judgment coming on you. Enoch was 369 years old while he thinks is 120 years of God's long suffering. And if you pick the years of Methuselah, for some years, Enoch kept prophesying God's will and purpose. Every time Enoch said, Methuselah, he was prophesying. Methuselah. You know, when they gave their children name, when they called them by the name, they were prophesying. Methuselah. What he means is, when I die, it will come to pass. He kept prophesying God's purpose against judgment, against sin. And then, of course, he gave birth to a child who was about 980 years or so. And he says, when he dies, it shall happen. So while Genesis chapter 6 verse 3 looks like 120 years of God's long suffering, it's actually 970 something years. That's the number of years that the message was going around. The man was confident of God's will. He named his child that way. Then we have Noah. Noah also was able to say same thing. 120 years. He says, your days shall be 120 years. Genesis 6, 6, 3. That's very bold. Your days shall be 120 years. I know we are in that season. We are in that season, church. Where you'll be very bold about what God has told you. We're in that season where you will stand up and speak what God is saying. Without fear. Without fear of contradiction. You will speak what God is saying boldly. You will pray for a sick person. You will pray for him and tell him, go and see a doctor, confirm the test and come back. Jakatagaba. You will lay hands on cancer. Bayanaha. Tell him, go and examine yourself with a doctor. Bring the result. It is done. You will have boldness. Zakotaba. Zakotaba. Where you will look at a madman and tell him, be normal. In the name of Jesus. And he will suddenly be normal. That time is now. I'm not hearing an amen in this church. I'm not hearing an amen in this church. I'm not hearing an amen in this church. Boldness. Boldness. Because God has a mission on the earth. Somebody say, I am part of God's mission. I didn't hear you very loud. I am part of God's mission on the earth. 
I am mission minded. I am mission minded. I have boldness for this assignment. Stand on your feet and say it very loud. I have boldness for this assignment. Say with me, in the name of Jesus, I will fulfill God's mission, God's mandate, God's assignment, God's plan, God's will on the earth. In my time, I will be a big light to my generation. Can I have a powerful amen? amen. Say, I am supernaturally minded. I raise disciples. I make disciples. This year, I disciple men and women. I disciple communities. I disciple communities. In the name of Jesus, I take the light of the gospel to the dark places of the earth. I am anointed to preach. I am anointed to heal the sick. I am anointed to cast out devils. And I'm anointed to turn men to righteousness. I am anointed to raise new creations and create the days of heaven on the earth. I didn't have a powerful amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Father, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice in this building online, on television, on radio. Agaba Nangronda go lodo bush. Brega daga lada hata. We are part of this commission flooding the earth with the truth of the gospel. Preaching the gospel of the blessing until all families of the earth be blessed. Thank you, Father. We answer to this call and we declare that our communities are overrun by the truth of the gospel. We proclaim the blessing. We proclaim the blessing. We proclaim the blessing. We proclaim the blessing. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father for answered prayer. Thank you Lord. Shakolada Baha. Bondo Lord Abosa. Just pray in tongues for another 60 seconds. Jekolo borokoto seke. Brega donglo do borokoto. Enge bo jakala de baha. Enge helebo do goroto sokale de baba. Mengra nangro do zokula na mangla na mangro do sokile de baya. Bronda gola da bayeles. Bayeles, bayeles, bayeles. Enge bo jakola da baba. Supernatural utterance. Go ahead and speak a few more seconds. Supernatural revelations. Supernatural utterance. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' precious name. And Lord, I decree that your word is confirmed in our lives with signs, wonders, and miracles. Thank you for the blessing. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen like you believe it. Amen. Say, I am God's missionary on the earth. I am on a mission to turn men to righteousness and raise disciples for the kingdom everywhere I go. Those of you watching online, for some of you, it's time you begin a campus where you are. It's time. You have eaten enough. It's time for you to be a luminary. It's time for you to stand out as a lighthouse so men in darkness can come in. It's time for you. Thank you, Lord. Stop saying I cannot. Stop saying I'm not able. Stop saying I don't have. Hey, stop saying that. Stop saying that. You are complete in him. You lack nothing. You have everything that pertains to life and godliness. You are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Stop saying I cannot. You have all the I can's inside you. Step up and step out. It's time. 
The night is fast spent. The night is fast spent. The day is here. Stop saying, I cannot. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are not a waster of grace. Say that with me three times very loud. I'm not a waster of grace. Two more times. One more time. Brother Paul said, you have not received the grace of God in vain. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. How? Through knowledge. As you receive knowledge, you are receiving grace. And you must turn that grace into a mission to get more people into this grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Get a good offering. Let's worship and honor Christ this morning. Let's give for the work of God. And for those online who are thinking about a campus, if you know you're the one I'm speaking to, all you need to do is send an email to me today, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com, indicating your location and letting me know you want to start a campus. We will train you, equip you, and work with you until the campus begins. Just send a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lift up your offerings to heaven, everybody. Those online, there are banking details. On television, there are banking details. We give in faith. We give in honor of Christ. We give with hearts of joy and gratitude. Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege to honor you, honor your word, and honor the things you are showing to us by the Holy Ghost. And I declare, and I declare right now, by the faith of God in this place, our offerings are a sweet smell before you, an offering acceptable. And we rejoice that both we and our offerings are acceptable to you. And we thank you for the privilege of worship and the privilege to serve you with our resources. And we thank you for the blessing upon your people today. We give you praise. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer in this building says, says that amen with joy in your voice. Amen. The online community, we're going to sign you off. But remember, I'll be live again, continuing what I am teaching in the second service at 11 a.m. You don't want to miss it for anything. But we love you guys and looking forward to share fellowship with you at 11 a.m. GMT plus one. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ. Let's celebrate our viewers around the world for being a part of this service this morning. Glory! Amen! Trust Woo! By this message. For these, all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damina. Please call plus 234-806-800-9939. Or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.